Hi there, I'm Mike, and what I have for you today is simultaneously my least and most favorite video to do every year. What I have for you is my top 10 Star Wars The Black Series figures of 2019. I've spent the last few weeks agonizing, theorizing, numerizing, trying to quantify what makes a good figure, what makes it the best of the year. Is it something that I like because I like the character? Is it something I like because it's a good toy? Is it something a little bit of both? Spoiler, it's a little bit of both. This might be a controversial top 10. My top 10 might not be the same as your top 10. That's because it's my video and it's my opinion. And that's just how this works. But in the end, after all the thinking and theorizing, when I look at the shelf, these are the 10 figures that came out in the last year that just really make me smile. If I had to sell all the figures that I got this last year, these are the 10 that would be hardest for me to sell. Although in some way they all, they all are. So, cheers, and let's get to the top 10. Ah, ooh, that is smooth, I like that. Before I get into the top 10, I do kinda just wanna go over honorable mentions. These are basically just the five that didn't make it in the top 10, but I still really liked. That's kind of how I'm getting over not putting them into the top 10 while still being a top 10. If some of these were in your top 10, congratulations, you have great taste. I love these figures. I just didn't like them as much as 10 other figures in my collection for the year. I'm not really gonna go into my reasons why. That's not the purpose of this video. But let's get into the top 10, starting with number 10, the Battle Droid. The Battle Droid was part of the first wave of the year. He was a figure that was on my wish list for quite some time. And for me, he checked all the boxes that he needed to. Number one, the line's sorely lacking on um, prequel characters. And while I'm not a huge fan of the prequel movies, I love prequel characters, especially anything to do with Clone Wars. Battle droids, clones, all of that. This one folds up, it looks great. Sure, it doesn't stand the best. In fact, nope, hasn't fallen over yet. Give it time by the end of the video, it might. That's partially why it's at the bottom of this list, but I still love it. They have a lot of personality and they can do a lot of great poses. Number nine, some would say is sort of a cheat, I want to put the entire Galaxy's Edge First Order pack on here. It's a four pack, so I figure if I pick one figure, I have to pick them all because they all come in the pack. But my wife said no, it's a top 10 figure list and I have to pick one of them. So if I have to pick one, I'm going to pick Commander Pyre out of the bunch. He's gold. He has the improved First Order Stormtrooper articulation, meaning that his elbows can actually bend past 90 degrees and he looks fantastic. I love the black and gold coloring. I love putting him in poses, he just looks badass. A close very second honorable mention to this pack would be the First Order Mountain Trooper, but since I'm only picking one of them, I have to say Commander Pyre, but the First Order Mountain Trooper is also very good. I'm not cheating, it's my list. Number eight, we have C-3PO. There were three C-3PO's that came out this year. Specifically, the one on this list is the one that came out with The Rise of Skywalker with Babu Frick. He was a Target exclusive. He came with Chewbacca's bandolier and bowcaster because he holds them for a whole hot second in the movie. But what I really love about this figure is the back of the head comes off, which is a pretty neat feature. If you put him in the freezer for a couple seconds, his eyes turn red, which is rad. And he comes with quite possibly my favorite character from the entire movie in this, Babu Frick. Number seven, we have the Sith Trooper. I first got this figure back in the summer when he's a San Diego Comic-Con exclusive. I since then bought three more. One in the regular black box, one in the first edition box, and then I also got the carbonized one. I love this figure enough to buy it four times. That's how much I like this figure. What can I say, I'm a sucker for a trooper in red. Number six is a result of another kind of trend in 2019, and that's take an old figure and then kind of spruce it up. There it goes, the uh, battle droid fell right on cue. Number six was the product of another trend in 2019, and that's to take an older figure and then sort of just spruce it up. The body itself is the same, but it's got a new head and maybe some new accessories. In this case, we have Emperor Palpatine. Without his robe and without his head and without all the accessories, his body, his arms, his legs are all the same as the 2015 version that came out. So the 2015 Emperor Palpatine was probably my least favorite figure in the entire line. In fact, I would go so far as to say it's the worst figure in the entire line. However, this updated figure is the sixth best figure in 2019. He has a much improved face sculpt, and not just one, he comes with three face sculpts. He also comes with a soft goods skirt so he can sit down in the chair that he also comes with. He comes with the same cane. 
And then most importantly, it comes with alternate hands with lightning coming out of them. The reason I mention all this is because it comes with so many accessories. You can actually take them and put them on the original Palpatine that came out in 2015, thereby giving you two good Palpatines for the price of um, one bad Palpatine and one overpriced, decent Palpatine. That's, wow, doesn't sound so good when you put it that way, but I love it. It's my sixth favorite figure of the year. Number five is another figure that will probably fall over by the time this video is ended, and that is General Grievous. General Grievous has been on my wish list for a while as well. There are some stipulations I wanted with him. Mostly, his arms should be able to come apart and put together, and they did that, and I love it. His cloak is fantastic. He comes with four lightsabers. He comes with a gun. He comes with pretty much everything I would have wanted a Grievous to come with. I did review this figure in a bunch of these on this list on my channel if you want to head back over and look at them. Suffice it to say, I absolutely love how this figure looks on my shelf when he's standing on it. I did put a little blue tack under him and then I put a little nail polish on his knees. It did seem to help with the stability if yours keeps falling over as well. But no matter how you put him, even if he's lying on the ground, he still looks really good. Number four, we have Clone Commander Fox. What can I say? I'm a sucker for Clone Commanders. I love Clone Troopers and Clone Commander Fox was a surprise. No one knew he was coming out until basically when he was out. I love his color scheme. It's red and white. He's got the cool clone trooper helmet that has the visor on it, which is my favorite style of clone trooper helmet. He's got a ton of weapons. Honestly, there's not much not to like about it. I do wish he had the improved articulation that Rex has. Instead, he has the kind of standard phase two clone trooper articulation like um, Commander Wolf and some of those other ones. The elbows don't bend quite as much as I'd like them to, but I'm not gonna let that stop me from enjoying it. Number three, we have a character that came out of nowhere basically for me. When they first announced her though, I wanted her and I didn't know why, I didn't have any connection to her. But after seeing her in The Mandalorian, I definitely wanted her, and that is Cara Dune. What can I say about Cara Dune? She looks fantastic. She's got a knife, she's got two guns, and she looks like she could kick your ass as a toy. Like, it looks like the toy could actually kick your ass. All I know is whenever I walk past her, I always nod and I'm very polite. Number two, in the same vein, we have the titular character of The Mandalorian known as The Mandalorian. Sure, I wish he had his Beskar armor. Sure, I wish he had the child as an accessory. But despite lacking all that, I still think he looks fantastic standing on the shelf. Shout out to the carbonized version of him. I actually like the non-carbonized version a little bit better than the carbonized version. It's just my personal preference. But as a fan of Boba Fett and Mandalorians in general, I absolutely love this character, but I love how he looked. I bought him on Force Friday without really knowing anything about him. I mean, sure, I figured he'd be popular once the Mandalorian came out and it'd be really hard to find, and I was right. But I bought him because he looked cool, and that's the only reason I really needed him in the first place. He looked cool and I bought him, and he looks even cooler now that I've seen all eight episodes and I have a connection to the character. It's a win-win for me. And number one, keeping on that Mandalorian train, we have the heavy infantry Mandalorian. I knew the instant I saw this figure, it was a leaked version, that this would be my number one figure of the year. And then I continued to know it when I pulled that figure out of the package. I don't know what Hasbro did, what they had to sacrifice to get this to be in plastic form, but they really nailed this figure. He looks awesome standing on the shelf. He looks awesome in every photo I've taken of him. He just doesn't look bad at all. You cannot make this figure look bad. He is badass. He has a rocket pack, a gigantic gun, and he is thick. He just never stops looking amazing. I'd also like to take a moment to acknowledge the worst figures of the year, or at least my least favorite figures of the year. I could have made a whole list of this, but I just want to point out two, because I usually only point out about two or three, and that's number one, Wedge and Tilly's, mostly just because of how lazy he is as a figure. He's basically just the Luke Skywalker X-Wing figure, but with a Wedge and Tilly's head. But last year, someone gave me a Wedge and Tilly's head that I put on the X-Wing Luke myself as a holdover for a Wedge and Tilly's figure that I hoped Hasbro would someday make. I never thought in my wildest dreams that Hasbro would basically just do the same. It's almost insulting that we got the Wedge and Tilly's that we did because Wedge deserves better. But that's not my least favorite figure of the year. My least favorite figure of the year is the Target exclusive Luke Skywalker Death Star Escape. This is basically, again, just a reissue of the original Luke Skywalker in the Stormtrooper disguise, but with a little bit more dirt or poop on him, because that's what it looks like, but also a new head sculpt with the hair slicked back and wet. But the problem here is the head sculpt looks absolutely nothing like Mark Hamill. If anything, he kind of looks like Justin Bieber. It's lazy and all arounds, and even when they could have made it better, they didn't. 
Mine came out bow-legged. I'm not a fan of it at all. In fact, it makes me sad that it's on my shelf. But being a completionist, I gotta have it. I also want to do a quick shout out to what I consider the best likeness of the line. There were a lot of great likenesses, but in my opinion, the best was Mace Windu. Hasbro knocked it out of the park, making it out like Sam Jackson. They did a really good job, and this is a tough one because there are a lot of great likenesses. I'd also like to shout out to the best accessory. Another addition to the line in 2019 were little accessories that were characters. Dio, BD-1. My favorite, hands down, of course, is Babu Frick because I said that in the video, so that's my accessory of the year. He deserves it. He deserves two mentions in this video. That's how much I like him. And then last, I just want to shout out the best soft goods in the line this year. And that belongs to the Elite First Order Snowtrooper. The cape that guy comes with is resplendent. It is white with black sewn inside of it. It's regal and I love it. It is the best soft goods we've seen in the line, period, let alone just this year. Well, that's it for 2019's top 10. What did you think? Let me know down in the downstairs area. I love to read and respond to those. I know we might not agree on everything that I said, but you know, let's be respectful in the comments. Everyone's got different opinions and then they're all okay. Star Wars is Star Wars. Let's just agree to that. I'd like to take a moment just to thank these people on my Patreon list that support me at a level where I thank them for Black Series videos. People on this list, thank you so much for supporting me and my channel. If you want your name on here, go ahead and visit my Patreon. If you don't care about that, there's a bunch of other ways to support my channel down in the downstairs area, up to and including liking, sharing, subscribing, hitting the bell. All that stuff goes a long way to helping out the channel, and that's it. Thank you so much for getting this far, and I'll see you later. Bye.